In this video, we will be looking at what Ashley has to say about the strength and security of knots. Ashley says that strength and security cannot be measured at the same time, and that a secure knot often breaks, and a strong knot often slips. Entry 63 is a discussion about an experiment that Ashley did for the Collins and Aikman Corporation. They asked Ashley to find a knot that wouldn't slip in a specific type of mohair yarn. He started his experiments with two assumptions. The first was that the security of a knot is determined by the stress it will endure before it slips, so a material that slips before it breaks would be needed. And secondly, the strength of a knot is determined by the stress it will endure before it breaks, so material that breaks before it slips would be needed. He made his testing apparatus and performed a series of uniform jerks at an even rate of speed using a dripping faucet as his timer. A bag of sand was used as his weight, and he continued the jerks until he reached 100 or the knot spilled. The types of knots he tested were only bends. He noted that only six knots failed to slip, one slipped every time on the first jerk, and some well-known knots produced unexpected results. During his experiment, Ashley started to question if the direction of the lay or twist of rope had any effect on the security of a knot. He notes that the right laid rope and left laid rope have opposite torsion. Looking at the right hand sheet bend, Ashley found that the two different lays of the bend slipped at about the same average rate, but the number of jerks required was about twice as much for the left laid rope compared to the right laid rope. Ashley next discusses the nip. To prevent slipping, a knot needs friction and some sort of pressure. A nip is the pressure and the place within the knot where the pressure occurs. He says that a knot's security appears to depend solely on its nip and that the so-called principle of the knot doesn't seem to be important. This principle states that no two parts which would move in the same direction if the rope were to slip should lie alongside of and touching each other. If it were possible to adhere to this principle, Ashley states that the knot would not hold any better than another unless the knot was well nipped. He uses the sheet bend as one example for this claim. The sheet bend violates the principle of the knot at about every part, but it has a good nip and does not slip easily. The left hand sheet bend follows the principle of the knot quite well, but has a poor nip and is unreliable. Entry 68 discusses Ashley's strength test. He tested the strength of bends with a series of single jerks of gradually increasing force. He used fish line and tested until the line broke to determine the knot's relative strength. He found that the break almost always occurred at a point outside the entrance to the knot leading him to disagree with the statement that a knot is weaker than the rope in which it is tied. Rather, he believed that it would be more accurate to say that a rope is weakest just outside the entrance to a knot. Ashley didn't carry out his experiments far enough to give conclusive results, but some of his results differed quite a bit from what was generally accepted. In the next video, we will look at the next 16 entries from the Ashley Book of Knots.